What's up YouTube? Welcome to another logical, plausible, probable, where in this video I'm going to tackle four stunningly naive arguments made against God by atheists around the world. Now before we get started, make sure you like and subscribe to my channel. I need to stay in touch with you and I want you to be aware of all the latest videos and different topics as they come out. Now, coming in at number four is the magic man in the clouds argument about how Christians and anybody who's a, in religion, all we believe in is this magic being in the clouds that uh, satisfies all of their God of the gaps arguments. Inconceivable. 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 Honestly, the more we learn about science, chemistry, physics, all the different aspects of how the universe exists. This argument gets more and more annoying to me personally because it's not a God of the gaps, how could this possibly be done argument. It's a, hey guys, uh, we're not suggesting it's done by magic. We're suggesting that there is a being that has the ability to control space, time, physics, chemistry, and so on, and enables life to exist which I find very interesting that they push back against this so far and claim God of the Gaps when human beings right now are learning how to control chemistry and physics and leverage these different components to be able to create our own stuff, obviously on a micro level. If we're able to do it, why is it so unreasonable to conclude that a greater being would also be able to do it just on a universal scale versus the micro that we currently live in? You keep using the word. I don't think it means what you think it means. Coming in at number three is the ah, we're too stupid, naive, unable to recognize whether or not there is evidence of design being required for our universe to exist, for life to exist. Uh, we're just not uh, capable of actually being able to tell one way or the other. I mean, come on, Ed, it's bullcrap. Don't get me wrong, I love the ladies. I mean, they rev my engine, but they don't belong in the newsroom. It is Anchor Man, not Anchor Lady, and that is a scientific fact. Uh -huh. To me, that's kind of an ins insult uh, to their own intelligence. Uh, you're basically arguing that you don't have the mental capacity to figure out whether or not it's logical to conclude something appears to be designed or doesn't appear to be designed because everything appears to be designed when there's no other scenario in any other aspect of human existence where if you come across technology, you come across information, you view something as having been built and that it couldn't exist without having been built, then if you're just throwing all that out the window in regards to one of the most important questions of our very existence. I don't know what we're yelling about! Now, to me, that's a stunningly naive uh, conclusion to reach that uh, literally insults everybody on this planet and argues that we're all too stupid to actually recognize whether or not uh, there's evidence for our existence uh, being subject to the intelligence of a designer. <laughs> I want to ask you a question straight out, flat out. I want you to give me the honest answer. What do you think the chances are of a guy like you and a girl like me ending up together? Coming in at number two is abiogenesis. It fascinates me how all of these philosophers, scientists, evolutionists, everybody who doesn't want to believe in a higher power loves to just kind of ignore the facet of abiogenesis being a legitimate question regarding our very existence. And it cracks me up when you look in any textbook. The premise of biogenesis means that life can only come from other forms of life, but we should somehow just forget about the fact that abiogenesis would require life to have come from non-living material and that there is an incredible amount of improbability, number one, and in some aspects, if you really want to get down to the nitty-gritty regarding information, that it's impossible for it to have occurred without an external influence, an intelligent agent coming into play to make it possible. What are my chances? Not good. You mean no? 
not good like one out of a hundred? I'd say more like one out of a million. But we should just forget about all that, ex blindly accept that it should have just happened by magic, uh, which is why it cracks me up about the uh, God of the Gaps argument. Uh, hmm, didn't you say that I'm the one that believes in magic and things just occurring? Well, it seems to me that if you're going to ignore abiogenesis, then you're actually the one that is falling into a God of the Gaps argument, except that your gods are chaos and chance, and mine are that there is an intelligent agent to whom creating life was not an overwhelming uh, expectation and was something well within their abilities and their powers to be able to make come forth. So you're telling me there's a chance. Yeah! Coming in at number one is the idea that an immaterial mind could never make something material like our universe come into existence. This one, especially in the modern era, just fascinates me because everything that we do in technology, whether you're watching this on your phone, on your computer, you might be walking on a Roku, on your smart TV, there's all sorts of different ways you could be leveraging this information that is always going to be immaterial. Computer code has never had mass, ever. It can be housed inside of something that does have mass, but it has never physically taken form in regards to matter so to make the argument that that could never possibly exist or ever be accomplished is to literally dismiss basically all of modern technology and all the things that we know about information and what can be done with it and that things can be immaterial but still have material impact. So I find this one, it's hard for me to get around this one, especially when they start trying to go down the rabbit hole of explaining all the information that's inside every form of life as just being chemical reactions, which is one of their favorite arguments. It's like, yeah, there's chemical reactions that are being done to execute information, but they don't actually contain the information. It's like saying that because you have an ink pen, uh, when you write on a piece of paper and the words form, that there was not actually a transfer of inf information from your mind to that piece of paper. It was just chemical reaction of the ink bonding to the paper. Now, as you think about these different topics that have been discussed, I want you to ask yourself, it's the whole purpose of this channel, what is the more logical, plausible, and probable conclusion to reach? That we somehow exist by ac accident, that there is no higher force required for our existence, for information to come into being, for life to form out of the non living materials that surround us, that information can exist outside of the material world. If those conclusions cannot be reached by human intelligence, then what is the point of us even having these arguments in the first place? Why would we even? engage in the debates and the books and all of the different facets of philosophy in general if there is absolutely no point because everything is completely deterministic and there is no external forces that might even possibly be variables to our very existence. So ask yourselves those questions. Make sure you like and subscribe uh, to the channel and I hope that you will come back for more logical, plausible, probable.